good job your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 wrestling secrets accidentally exposed on air this should be a good one sometimes cameras pick up things or see you see things that you're not supposed to see so this is gonna be a dope one on uh parts for unknown man if you haven't checked their channel out go check them out uh, actually, let me go ahead and subscribe while I'm over here talking about go checking out their channel. I need to go ahead and subscribe and turn on post notifications. Don't know why I haven't done that, but I've done it now. Checked out a few of their videos, man. I believe Adam has dropped a fantasy book in how you would have booked Keith Lee. I think I want to check that out. It's a new video. So if y'all want me to check out that video, run up the likes, put down in the comment section. Please check out how Adam would have booked Keith Lee. I am very interested in that. And I will definitely do that for you guys. But let's get right into this video. Appreciate all love and support. Road to 70K. And let's do the damn thing. I'll tell you something you might not be ready to hear, but it's time you fully accepted it. Selling Sunset is mostly staged and scripted. Chrishell didn't just get a job at an estate agent's. She's an actress! Professional wrestling, know, however, is 100% unscripted and real. That's a fact. But in some <laughs> corners of the dark web, people like Ben Shapiro and Alex Jones, I guess, are peddling goddamn filthy lies. Lies, I tell thee! The wrestling might just be predetermined. <gasps> to oh, them bro. I say, you try climbing a ladder in a high pressure situation. It slows you down and takes a really long time. Like a real, like a really long time. Like, okay, you can probably definitely reach that prize yeah. now. It's still real, real to me, damn, damn it. it. <laughs> it's still real to me, damn it. <laughs> Legendary God tier meme. It's still real to me. <laughs> but just for an intellectual exercise, let's look at the so-called evidence where the secrets of how wrestling really works were mistakenly exposed in moments the audience weren't supposed to see. Huh. I'm Ollie Davis hailing from Parts for Known, and this is 10 Times Wrestling Accidentally Exposed Its Secrets on air. Oops. But before we get on with that list, I just want to give a shout out to your local hometown. It's great. Now I've given you a compliment. It's only polite your, for you to return the favor and subscribe hometown. and enable notifications to always that, on so to know first sure when our latest that, so. wrestling video goes live. And like and comment and, and, and share this list around. All hail the algorithm. Also, a huge thank you to our sponsor for this video, Surfshark, where they're giving our viewers 83% off and four months free if you click the link in the video description below. Stick around until the end of the video for more on What's that. Up, Number 10, the invisible hand moves Drew McIntyre's table. Oh, no, no, not the invisible hand job, Don Callis. Although if Don Callis was under the ring here, this would be an even bigger secret than I first thought. At Hell in a Cell 2021, Drew McIntyre challenged Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship. And they had a pretty solid match, all things considered. One of the biggest spots of the match saw Lashley slam McIntyre off the apron through a table at ringside. Ouchies. Yeah. Or maybe not ouchies. The move was filmed with bubbles throwing Drew out of shot. The camera then cut to McIntyre Lane in the rubble, where there was a hand sticking out from under the ring, sliding a chunk of the table under Drew. We never actually saw the table break. This was in the lockdown era of WWE, <laughs> still being shot with no crowd in the Thunderdome. <laughs> Drew had not actually taken the devastating bump to the floor we thought he had, but rather it was all smoke and mirrors made possible by a lack of a live audience. Wow. Number nine. The referee slides back crazy. in the chair. Sometimes life just feels a little bit out of reach. And by life, I mean a chair when you're trapped in a figure four leg lock and wrapped up in a ladder. But that is also still sometimes how life feels literally. Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch's last woman standing match at WWE's Evolution pay-per-view was one of the best WWE mm -hmm. main roster matches of 2018. It the was. two women battered each other Fantastic over the SmackDown match. Women's Championship, but there was one spot that broke the fourth wall. Lynch was supposed to break up the ladder-assisted figure four leg lock by hitting Charlotte with a chair. The only problem was she couldn't quite reach it. So the referee very clearly puts his foot on top of the chair and slides it to Becky oh, to free herself. No. Although given reports that nobody likes Flair backstage, maybe the ref just wanted her to lose. <laughs> Number eight, blindfold eye holes on display. Blindfold matches are never really any good. I don't know about all of you, but whenever I'm watching one, I'm like, hey, I wish the audience had blindfolds on too. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Ollie. That's a... 
That's a good observation. The fans not being able to see sure would have helped Jake the Snake Roberts and Rick Martel's blindfold match at WrestleMania 7, because while the referees are helping them put bags on their heads before the match began, you can very clearly see mesh eye holes in <laughs> Jake's. Number seven. That's, that's wrestling for you. Oh, 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 just you guys are gonna have a blindfold match, but you're not gonna be blind, but they'll think you are. That that doesn't even as wrestling. That's wrestling. The cringe hokiness of wrestling. That that's it right Sinkara's there. Sinkara's trampoline shown on camera. The original Sinkara. Oh yeah. Sinkara Uno, let's say. Well, like I remember when I first saw it, I was like, damn, how the hell is he doing that? But then they, you know, they accidentally showed the trampoline. Likely go down in history as one of the botchiest botches in the history of botchdom. But this botch wasn't really actually his <sighs> fault. It was mm -hmm. WWE Productions. Quick, Kevin Dunn, more shaky cam. The shaky cam fixes everything. Sinkara <laughs> used to enter the ring by leaping from the ground all the way over the top rope. It was supposed to give you the impression of his extraordinary athleticism, his near superhuman jumping power, which is slightly undone when you <laughs> see the mini trampoline he was using by the ring. After WrestleMania 27, <laughs> the original Sin Cara made his WWE debut, where the camera showed him pointing to the ring and, well, there's the trampoline. It's, it's right there. <laughs> I mean, of course, he was using a trampoline to yeah. do the spot. It wasn't, it's not like I, I, I believed he was flying or anything, but actually seeing the thing is like leaving in the wires holding up Spider-Man mm -hmm. in a Marvel fight scene. Kind of takes you out of it, unless it's emo Spidey. I love that guy. Number six, John Cena drops his blade. By October 2009, WWE was as deep in PG territory yep. as a penis in your mum. Mum joke, I totally mum joked you. What? They even avoided saying the word asshole when Triple yeah. H described legacy as like butts, but not so much the cheek, but more the little center part. But that PG veil was nearly torn apart when John Cena dropped a razor blade during his Hell in a Cell match with Randy Orton. Cena takes a bump and right in the view of the camera, a blade falls out and lands on the mat. Crazily, the last guy to blade in WWE prior to this was Batista, and he was fined a hundred thousand dollars for it. So seeing the implement Damn. used by wrestlers to cut themselves in matches to pretend they've been busted open by a move was shocking, especially with it being dropped by the face of WWE PG. The referee picked the blade up, and it was never used. Number Damn, five, that's crazy. Chris Jericho's insane. Find a hundred K. Dang. Sheesh. Grip strength. Chris Jericho likes to talk about himself. He has more gimmicks than the next relaunch of NXT, oh, and he's man. been bringing up beating The Rock and Steve Austin in one night for about 15 years straight. Yep. So why doesn't he ever brag about his Herculean grip strength? During his rivalry with CM Punk over the WWE Championship in 2012, <laughs> Jericho targeted Punk's straight edge lifestyle. In one mm -hmm. segment, Jericho went to hit Punk over the head with a whiskey bottle, only for the glass to turn to dust in his hands, resulting in Jericho just kind of splashing punk with booze. <laughs> the power of Christ compels thee. No, Jericho didn't have an infinity gauntlet, you nerd. This was clearly a prop sugar glass bottle mm -hmm. designed to safely shatter, which is preferable to breaking a real glass bottle yeah. over someone's head, because that would be a murder. And as if the angle being ruined by that wasn't enough, Jericho slipped and fell yeah. over right after. <laughs> Number four, an amplifier shown under the ring. Have you ever noticed that when you go to a live wrestling event, the bumps are like really loud? Much louder than you thought they would be from watching on television. The reason for this is WWE amplifies the sounds of the matches by putting audio equipment under the ring oh. to broadcast the noise through the arena's speakers. On one occasion, though, they accidentally let the fans in on this trick. A wow, bad part, I 1997, didn't I, didn't I know that. Sergeant Slaughter made sure to shine a flashlight under the ring to make sure there was no one trying to interfere in the first ever Hell in a Cell match between The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. In doing so, he shined the light right on an amplifier that WWE had under there. Wow. This is probably the only time on television that WWE has given a detailed view of what goes on beneath the mat. Unless you count that time DX crawled under the ring into a mini universe of horn swoggles and- Yeah, that, <laughs> that was a time. <laughs> like I said, wrestling had its finest. It's many people's court. Number three, Chris Jericho's crash pads. There have been many, many examples of wrestling promotions using crash pads to make sure their performers don't get injured in major spots. Mm -hmm. The Undertaker choked Sam Triple H to his doom at WrestleMania X7, which a replay then revealed as a nice cushiony crash pad. Yeah. Jeff Hardy did a huge swanton bomb onto a marga off a TV truck at One Night Stand 2008, but then the camera moved past some conveniently placed crates to expose crash pads stacked mm -hmm. on top. But the most recently agreed example of this came with Chris 
Jericho's swan dive off the blood and guts cage courtesy of MJF. Now, nobody is saying here that Jericho should have actually taken that bump for real. It would have been a murder. It was production's fault for showing the crash mat so much. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, with it being the climactic spot, it became the main talking point after an otherwise excellent and emotional bout. Number two. Women stop wrestling during the commercials. The start Wait, of the pandemic what? was a weird time. Nobody really knew how to act in real life, let alone how to produce a wrestling show stripped of 90% of its production and a live audience. So Triple H just decided to make his version of the Tim and Eric show. Stone Cold cut a promo to a load of empty chairs on Raw and kicked Byron Saxton in the dick. Yep. And Hunter joined commentary on SmackDown and coloured in Michael Cole's soul patch. But the lasting moment from those early days was the very first match of the pandemic era of Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross versus Sasha Banks and Bailey. When the show cut to a commercial break with no crowd there live, the wrestlers just stopped wrestling. Not oh, like wow. sit in a rest hold, which is often the case during commercials. It literally stopped. There was no one in the venue to wrestle for, so during the ad break, the women involved just hung out. This wow. wasn't their fault. The footage wasn't supposed to get out, but an international broadcaster accidentally aired the commercial oh, break, no. prompting WWE to then tell all performers to wrestle during the ads. And number one, The Rock promo notes on his wrist. Yep, this is a classic one. This is a classic one. And John Cena actually, you know, mentioned that. I don't think he wasn't supposed to, but he kind of went off script and he mentioned that. I believe The Rock kind of got upset about that. Scripted promos in general don't work. They come across as robotic. And when the wrestlers literally have the scripts in shot, it kind of takes you out the realism. Like when Tucker was shown throwing his promo notes on the ground in a backstage segment. Paul Heyman's visible notes during an episode of Talking Smack. And whatever this promo was from Aaliyah, well, she looks down as often as Kevin Dunn cuts the camera. Rock the Dwayne Johnson, though, doesn't need any of that. He's one of the greatest promos of all time. Arguably the most charismatic talker in wrestling mm -hmm. history. So seeing his promo yep. bullet points on his wrist in a 2012 segment with John Cena punctured not only wrestling in that moment, but the mythology of the Dwayne spontaneously electric persona from the Attitude Era. Mm -hmm. You could clearly see a bullet point list sharpened on his wrist for a promo ahead of his WrestleMania 28 match with Cena. It was so obvious, Cena directly referenced it. Yep. Rock was visibly rattled by being called out, causing him to stumble and stutter the rest of his promo. Professional wrestling's trick up its sleeve had literally been exposed. If professional wrestling wore sleeves, that is, which it doesn't, because muscles. Now here's huge. That's exactly what happened. John Cena used that, you know what I'm saying, on his, uh, as a rebuttal, like, bro, you're coming out here writing promos on your wrist. You don't have it. And it was just, it was cool to see that in a sense from like, damn, not cool, but it was just like, yo, has The Rock lost his step, you know, when it comes to delivering promos? And it had been a while since he'd been in the company, but it was just crazy to see John Cena pointing that out. And that was a real thing that really happened. So comment down below. Let me know what was the most interesting secret that you found out from this video. The audio part, the, the, uh, the audio part being under the ring to amplify the spots and stuff. I found that interesting. I didn't even know that was... Uh, WWE did that so that's pretty fucking cool in my opinion so comment down below let me know appreciate all love support road to 70k appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all on the next one peace